This is the handover for the Autorola 747. We'll begin on the outside of the vehicle with the cab aspects first of all. First of all, you've got your diesel filler cap. Central locking to the cab, however, the outer flap's not affected, so it's ignition key in, twist, and that then allows you to fill it with diesel. When you open the cab door, just inside, on the end of the dashboard, you have your bonnet release, and underneath the passenger seat, you have your vehicle toolkit. Spare wheel is located underneath the back of the vehicle uh, with an access on the near side for winding that spare wheel down. Below the cab carpet, you have the access cover for your engine battery. When you open the bonnet, it's a centrally located lever. And from there, you can access your screen wash, your brake fluid, power steering fluid, and radiator reservoirs along with the oil filler and dipstick. And then over on the right hand side, should you ever need to jump start the vehicle, there is a paddle access, which is done from the ignition key. Lift that one up. You can attach your positive onto the end of that paddle. And the negative goes onto this bolt just here, which is located next to the alarm battery pin. On the off side of the vehicle, you have a couple of features. So first of all, you have the exhaust vent for the blown air room heating system. It's important that this doesn't get obscured. There's no travel cap for it. It's a permanently open vent. Low down on the skirt, you have an onboard wastewater tank. Pulling this lever out to this position allows that wastewater tank to open and it can be discharged into a drain or a gully. Push the lever back in to close and it's out of sight on the skirt. Further down, you've got your fresh water inlet. Turn and use a hose pipe to put your water in. Inside the tank, underneath the seat, there are two drain points for draining it off. One is a transit drain, which leaves around about 20 liters of water, and then there's a full drain underneath. Your toilet cassette, the flush water for this comes directly from your onboard fresh water tank, so you only need to worry about the cassette. Previous owners uh, left a small sachet of blue chemical, but we for up here would recommend that you use the green. Pull up on the blue lever, it should come out nice and easily. If it doesn't, double check and make sure that the slider is shut properly on the toilet bowl itself. Pull the cassette out. On a campsite, you'll have collection points for these to go into, so you take the blue cap off completely tip the whole thing up, press the blue button in at the top, and that should allow then the waste to drain out of the base. Before you load it back in, there'll be a measuring cup inside the top of the cap. So up to a cap full of blue chemical or green, as we would recommend, or a couple of sachets of the digesting uh, solutions. Mix that with about two liters of water, swell it back in, and then load back into the cassette body like so. So storage locker located on both sides of the vehicle. In this one, we've got the infill cushions for the bed. On the opposite side, you'll have access to the awning uh, handle and also for the bunk ladder at the front. There's a bike rack on the back. It's loaded for probably around about 50 kilos in total capacity. Uh, you've got straps which you can utilize for securing the bikes. And then there's crossbars in the garage which can come over and secure the bike positions in the top. And then you've got the garage then on the near side to say the bunk ladders in there for the electric bed uh, along with some bike rack components for the crossbars and also the awning handle as well. Alongside the awning handle you have a tension rafter we'll explain that in a second but we'll concentrate on the awning first. So the awning is designed for sunny conditions so in windy or wet conditions we would advise you put them away hook through the eyelet at the end and begin winding the awning out. Wind it out to a convenient distance where you can take hold of the pelmet and reach the legs. So at the end of the pelmet you've got this leg support which comes out. So pull that out through your fingers and then unclip the leg from inside the pelmet and rotate each leg down in turn. Unwind the arm on the leg and secure it into position. 
and then repeat on the other process. We're not going to fully extend this one because the wind speed has just started to pick up, but obviously you need to repeat on both sides. Mounted in the central point of the pelmet, you have uh, a mounting point for the tension rafter that's then connected to one on the front section and you can then extend what will look like a third leg um, into the main uh, body of the unit just to give you a little bit more structural rigidity. To put the legs away, it's the reverse. So first of all, unwind each leg. Clip it into the center of the body of the pelmet first of all, and then you just make sure that it's back in position at the knuckle. And then wind the whole unit back in until you hear it click back into position. Like so. Mains plugs into the side of the van. Uh, there's a vent uh, for the fridge here as well. Make sure the cap is open to 90 degrees. Push in nice and firmly and securely, first of all, and then connect to the main supply on your PowerPoint um, or your domestic arrangement or supplies. On the side of the caravan door, you've got your gas locker. In here, you've got a single uh, propane cylinder. You turn the gas supply on and off using the brass nut on top to turn it anti-clockwise, to turn it on, turn it clockwise, to turn it off. That feeds directly through the regulator and into the core of the gas system. Underneath the cooker, you've got some isolated hats for the individual appliances, which you can isolate from if you wish to. Uh, there's no crash sensors on these, so make sure that the gas supply is switched off at the bottle when you're traveling. And the mains leads in there as well. When you first open the caravan door, you'll notice that there is a concertina blind on the inside. Make sure that the door is pinned back, otherwise if this blows shut, it will crease the blind for sure. So when you first come into the van above the caravan door, you've got a 12 volt control panel. Press and hold in on the bottom right hand switch and it should turn on your 12 volt supply and it allows you to choose a uh, centigrade reading for internal and external temperatures. Your interior lights, an outside awning light, switch for the water pump which you would use on demand, fresh water level indicator, uh, leisure battery uh, level indicator and your cab battery indicators. Symbols at the bottom indicate that there's a relationship between the two batteries to allow charging and that you are also now currently plugged into the mains supply. So with the gas system lit, it's important to note that there's no isolator on these glass lids. So make sure that all of the burners are switched off because if you try and bring the lid down over this, it won't cut out, it will continue to burn and it will cause the glass to shatter and explode. You light up the oven in the same way. I'm gonna be cautious about doing this uh, because we've got some flammable material to stop the shelves from rattling. So I should do it very, very quickly. You turn it in one direction and that will cause the oven to dry it using the igniter. Then you turn it in the opposing direction for the grill. Underneath the oven, you've got your individual isolator taps for your individual appliances, as we mentioned earlier. So you've got the water heater, room heating system, the oven, the hob, and the fridge. At the moment, they're all in line. So you're getting supply going through to all of those units. As an example, if you turn to one of these through 90 degrees, then that shuts the supply off to that specific unit. The vertical, then they're running. Adjacent to this, you've got your mains RCD unit. You will need to have all of these switches in the up position in order for the mains supply to work. You can do a safety test to make sure that the main system is working by lifting up the end switch, pressing in the test point, and it should immediately trip out, indicating that you need, you have main supply coming into the van. Three-way fridge, turn the power on. Press and hold in for a couple of seconds and the first display of the figure that you'll see indicates that we are running on the mains. To choose to get it to run with the gas, press and hold in for a couple of seconds and it should allow it then to change over to gas. If there's a problem with it finding the gas, you may well see a hazard light come in here indicating that there's a problem to double check and make sure your gas supply um, is there. 
The battery operation, this will only work when the engine is running. It's taking a direct feed from the alternator to maintain and sustain the temperature that's within the fridge. So you will have need to have cleared, uh, cooled, I should say, the fridge on mains or on gas, first of all, um, on a nice level ground. So if I choose the battery now, because the engine's not running, it will start to bleep at me, indicating that there's a fault, there's a problem. So we'll get rid of the annoying bleep and we'll go back to this one. Last one is your temperature setting. The more of these that are illuminated, the colder the fridge will become. The water heater drain valve is located underneath the rear facing dinette seat. It's thermostatically controlled, so it's likely that in cold weather you'll find it in this position with the uh, diagonal uh, or uh, diamond shape paint, uh, facing the same direction as the casing, meaning that the water heater is now drained out. To reset it for use, you need to turn it through 90 degrees. And on the back of the casing, out of sight, there is a small blue button at the base of the unit. It's about the same size as a Smarty. And that re then resets that unit. The, thermo the housing will open at 2 degrees centigrade and can only be reset at 8 degrees. At this point, you can now start purging the water heater. This is done by turning on the hot water tap and drawing water from the fresh water tank through the heater until you have a continuous pressure. At that point, it's ready to use. In the airline lockers above the U-shaped lounge, you have your telescopic television aerial. So release the wheel, push the aerial up through. The direction of the aerial is indicated by this little black line that's on there. Uh, it has a signal finder on it, so this will gradually turn green um, as the signal strength intensifies. Draw the aerial back down through and close off. And you've also got your solar panel regulator in there. So you've got a constant feed going into the batteries on bright sunny days. The rear roof light has a long worm drive on it. So you may find that you have to turn it five or six times before it bites and actually starts to wind open. It should open to a position of around about 55, 60 degrees to the flat. And then you've also got blinds and fly screens. When you're winding it back down, Don't wind it until it's closed because you'll still have a bit of bounce in it. So make sure that you wind it until it feels tight. You'll feel a degree of resistance. Just press on the lid to make sure that it's nice and secure and then you can fold the handle back over like so. The trimmer control panel for your central heating and your hot water is found in the rear lounge area. To wake the system up, press and hold the button down below and then you'll see the following symbols appear. Now, the first one that's flashing, this is for your central heating. So when it's flashing, you press the button to enter. Let's take, wake it back up again. So when uh, a function is flashing, you press this button to enter that function. You change function by turning the dial. This is hot water, that's fuel selection, that's the fan. There we go, the timer, clock, and settings. So let's go back to the internal temperature of the vehicle. Press the button to enter the function. It's currently showing as being in the off position. Turning the dial clockwise, you turn up to a temperature of select 20 degrees Celsius and press enter. We now have this symbol here flashing. It will continue to flash until you uh, reach temperature. Moving along, water similarly, enter. Water is currently off. You can have eco at about 40 degrees Celsius. You can have hot at 60 degrees Celsius and you can have boost. It doesn't actually get any hotter. It just gets there quicker and it gets there quicker by um, using all power towards the, uh, the hot water just to get you up to temperature that bit quicker and we'll switch off. We will put the water on in the morning. So at the time you come to collect your vehicle, the water will be hot. You can put your hand under the tap and see that everything is working. This is fuel selection. So we come to fuel selection, press and enter. We're on electric two at the moment, which is uh, drawing approximately uh, 1800 watts of energy. You can do this on most campsites. However, if you're on an older campsite that perhaps doesn't have a very large ampage at the uh, hookup point, you can turn down. So let's go back into it, select the fuel and on electric two, drop down to electric one where you only draw 900 watts. 
You can also have mix, which is gas and 1800 watts, mix one, gas and 800, uh, 900 watts, and gas on its own. But we'll go back to electric two as we're plugged in, we'll save your gas. Now, eco, the fan. Because we have the hot blown air on, we can have the fan running and it will blow warm air around the cabin, bring it up to high, and obviously it will, uh, you'll hear the fan speed increase. When you are not using central heating, let's go back to the central heating and switch the central heating off. When you're not using the central heating, that fan works as a vent. Off and vent. And it will circulate air. It's not an air conditioning unit. It won't make the van cooler, but it will move the air around that is in the van. And uh, let's take a backspace. Then next we have timers. So you can set timers on your central heating. If you're out on the hill and you're going to be coming back from a walk at four o'clock, you can put your heating to come on at half past three so your van is nice and warm by the time you get back. Clock, you set your clock uh, to either 24 hour. Well, it's set at 24 hour at the moment. If you want to set it to 12 hour, you would go into settings turn until you find 12 or 24 and change it 24 or change the language, change the brightness of the screen, change the temperature. Do you want your temperature to read Celsius or do you want your temperature to read Fahrenheit? The choice is yours. And then back to start. This little symbol here of the plug illuminates to indicate that you are plugged into mains. When you first come into the cab of the vehicle, you've got a series of controls on the driver's door. So you have your electric mirror controls and your electric window controls. For the mirror, you will need to have the ignition on and turn the toggle in the direction of the mirror that you want to adjust and then adjust the mirror accordingly. All four, the blind spot mirrors and the main mirrors are adjustable. Cab blinds, so side pull for these onto a magnetic strip and then for the cab centre blinds they draw together around the arm of the rear view mirror and then magnetically join together at the base. Make sure that they're clipped back into position before you set off down the road. Same story with the cab blinds, side door blinds as well. On the dashboard uh, to the right of the steering wheel you have a uh, headlamp beam adjustment as well as your rear fog light. Uh, the mode button allows you to access various men, uh, menu settings for adjusting uh, things like the date and time on the control panel. Your wipe controls are on the right hand stalk, so down for intermittent and then down for a single and a double speed and then back for your screen wash on there. Steering wheel controls are all related to the operation of the stereo, so you have your volume, mute, and your phone and seat controls. There's two stalks on the left-hand side. The upper stalk is your main beam and dip headlights. And then on the end, you've got um, your indicators for left and right. And then the lower stalk is your cruise control and speed limiter, one direction for the limiter um, and one for the cruise. Reverse on these, up on the centre collar, up, over and back. And you should see an image appear on your reversing camera directly down over the bike rack. Along the bottom, you've got your heated mirrors, uh, central locking for the cab, hazard light switch, and then your hill descent and traction controls. Above that, you've got your ventilation for direction and temperature, and then your uh, speed and uh, the external direction and internal direction controls. Radio, press in on that one and you should get your radio display come up. And then a volume control from there. And you have the option of using a media setting which is related to a USB which is above the cup holders in the central point as well. You've got storage into here. This one's connected to the air conditioning. So if you've got the air conditioning on, you'll get a cold breeze coming into this little locker, passenger airbag, and then another storage locker underneath. And then you also have your pull-up clipboard 
On the side of it is a release, which enables you then to attach other media items such as mobile phones um, or pads. So that concludes the handover for your Autoroller 747. Sincerely hope the van's going to give you lots of miles and lots of smiles. But if you do need us, then please just get in contact with us either by phone or by email. Thank you very much on behalf of Highland Cabal Vans.